So in this video what I'm going to cover off is some basics around securing and managing securities in a SharePoint team site. So here we are at our SharePoint team site but what I'm just going to do to give you a quick overview is uh, let's have a look at the permissions. So by default uh, what you normally get when you set up a team site is you get three groups, um, security groups, and you get they're called members, owners and visitors. So visitors are read, members are edit, which is read write, and owners have full control. Now if we go into, for example, members, click on that, we can see which individual users um, are members of this group. You can see that um, this is an individual user, so to create a new user I can simply go new, and I can add an existing user um, into here to give them access. Now, what I can also do, if you notice up the top there, is that I can, for example, create a group. So I can create a new group here, so um, a new security group, and assign users into that as required. So this is basically a SharePoint group, which is um, unique to SharePoint, cannot generally be utilized elsewhere within Office 365. Now when I create a new group, you'll notice that I have to select from the permissions. So at the moment, this is the full range of permissions that I do have available. So I can go from full control down to design, down to edit, contribute, read, view only. So what in this case, I'm going to set it to design and go create. So this will create a new group which will appear in our list of security groups for our team site. So if we go down here, you'll see uh, basically that we have a group here called new group. There it is there. And if I select, click on it, you'll see that I can add individual users into it. So what I'll do, I'll actually just take myself out of that group because I have rights elsewhere. So that's how simple it is to add and remove users. So again, what I'm looking here is when I click on groups, I'm getting the groups from the complete site collection and we'll get in there and we'll show you how the groups work um, from within the team site shortly. So with those securities in mind, let us dive into and show you how you can um, set up these permissions quickly and easily. So if I want to share a complete site with um, a group of users, what I do here is simply click the share button and I will now see a shared dialogue. So again, what I've got here is I can simply type the user's name and if it's an Office 365 user you will see that name appear and then I can simply go to share. Notice down the bottom here I've got the option to uh, send or not send an email invite and by default look um, at the group that it's added to. So it's added to the tutorial members group which has edit rights. If I pull that down I can obviously change that. You'll see in here here's the new group that I created so I will add this new user to this exist to this new SharePoint group which I just created and that will give them access. Now when I do that up in the top right you'll see that I get notification that it has been shared with a user and if I elected that user will receive an email notifying them and giving them a link to that SharePoint site. So really that's how easy it is to share. Now if I go back into the share uh, again and have a look what it will now show me is up the top here you'll see that it says it is shared with this individual user. If I click on the shared with you'll see a group of users that is currently shared with. So this is myself Lewis Collins who I'm logged in as and I've just shared it with uh, Robert Crane here. Now I can choose to email everybody and if I want I can go into uh, the advanced options within SharePoint to get more details. Now when I do that, if I click on, click on the advanced option here, you'll see this takes me to the traditional way of configuring SharePoint permissions, which is what we noted before at the beginning of the video. So again, this should be very familiar to you in the beginning of the video. But what I will do is I will move back to the team site and I'll show you how to get to that area as well. So. Most of the configuring permissions requires you to be an owner or to have full access to the site. When you do have that, you can then set permissions for your site library. Now, when we've got our site library displayed, we can go to the cog in the top right and that will display a menu. From that menu, we select site settings. So that site settings will take us into some configuration options for our team site and allow us to make any changes. Now, 
in the top left hand corner you'll see under users and permission I have people and groups site permissions and site app permissions so if I select site permissions this will take us into the area which we have now seen a number of times so this is the new group that I created and the three existing groups that were there before so as mentioned before uh, what I can do is simply uh, select the group to drill into the information about who is in there who has access to it and uh, so at the moment only Robert Crane so to add a new users in here I can simply click on this and add myself in as a user and you'll see as an Office 365 user that will appear and I will simply share that so now I will appear in that group I will assume all the rights of that group and uh, that will also allow me to get access to whatever I need now remember that the way that this works is is that if you're assigned to a group with um, lower rights and you are in a group of with higher rights the higher rights always take precedence so I remember that the the rights are hierarchical okay so that is the permissions for the whole site now important to remember that the idea with a SharePoint site is that the rights flow down the tree so we've now set the rights for our entire site by default now what we can do is we can go into an individual element within SharePoint so I'm going to go into my document library and what I can elect to do here is I can configure the rights just for this document library to be different from the rest of my site so to do that I select the library tab the ribbon menu will be displayed from there what I will select on the right hand side is a button here called library settings so if I select that that will take me into the configuration options for this document library now one of the options you will see here in the middle column under permissions and management is permissions for this document library so if I select that that will take me into the ability to configure permissions for this library now the first thing to notice is that by default that the rights are inherited so this means that the rights at the site team site level flow down automatically into the document library by default so I can't change anything because the rights are controlled one level above but in the top left here I can select the button to stop inheriting the rights. so this will now break that inheritance and stop them flowing down the tree I need to confirm that by hitting OK you'll now see once that completes that I can go in and start working with individual security so here you'll see that what I can do now is I can go in and select these individual items so I can go in now and I can remove the permissions for this group so what that will mean is I'll remove anybody who is a member of this new group out of rights to this document library so I can then for example go in and maybe select uh, members and what I can then do is check to see who's in there that group obviously flows through as it does did before but what I can do now is because I've broken the inheritance I can make this group have more or less rights than it would normally in the team site so I can simply select that and then go into edit user permissions so that will now allow me to control the permissions for this entire group so again I want to uncheck edit and check design so I've now upgraded the rights for that group of users just for this document library so now they can do more in this document library than they could with anywhere else in the team site now I can go in and add individual rights to this location and check permissions and do things like that but if I decide that I no longer want to have unique permissions for this document library I simply select the button in the top left here to delete those unique permissions it will then let me know that that will be be lost so any changes or customizations I've made will be lost I go OK and that will now re-inherit the rights and basically copy those from the team site back down so again what I need to do if I want to make unique rights is stop inheriting if I need to uh, undo that and allow them to again uh, flow down I then um, select um, the option to go back to them now we have the uh, option here to not only um, set rights at a team site level 
which is the first thing we did with the share command. The second option that we've covered is setting rights for an individual item, so within a document library for example, so that controls all the um, securities within the document library. But what I can also do is I can actually assign securities down to individual items in this library. So what I'm going to do is select upload. I'm going to go in here and just upload a single document. So let's pick this one here. We'll upload that into our document library. Uh, give it a second to upload. And as we normally see, here is our document. Now if I select this to work on it, and then select manage from the menu bar across the top, one of the options um, that I will have here, you'll see that I have again the option to share with. So if I select that, this will bring me up to my familiar dialog. So now I can, as I did before, invite individual people by simply putting in their email address and then you'll note that I can select whether they can edit or whether they can view. So when we share individual files, we have um, more flexibility in the rights that we can give people. But once again, I can set them to require login and then down the bottom here I have the option to again send them an email invite. Now the difference here is when I share an individual file I get an additional option. So what I can do is I can go in here and I can create a link to this file. So this basically allows direct uh, anonymous access to this file. So this would allow someone to simply click on this link if it was sent in an email and it would display that file um, in a browser window. So in this case they can only view the file. If I create an edit link they can go in and actually edit that file. So it's really great if you want somebody to work on a spreadsheet or a document without having the need to log in. If I go to the last option as before you'll see I have the users that the document is shared with by default. So remember that is inheriting the rights from the team site and the team site is sharing it with these two people. Again I've got the option to go into the advanced area when I go into the advanced area you'll find that it is very similar to what you have seen before. So this will allow me again to go in and make any changes. Now remember that this is a individual document within a document library and again this is um, it has unique permissions here because we've sh set up individual sharing. If I want I can go in here and I can delete the unique permissions and I can revert it back to those of the document library. So remember quite quick and easy to do that. So you can create um, individual rights by breaking the inheritance and then you can reinstate those rights if required. You can drill down and you can uh, create individual rights all the way down to single documents. So what I'm going to do here is again stop the inheritance, make it unique uh, for this uh, file now when I do that, you'll see here that, again, I can go in and add individual rights. I can also check the permissions for the groups. So again, nice and easy to do that. So if I wanted to go in and grant permissions to an individual user, I just go in here and, again, type their name, as you've seen before, and, again, require sign-in. Now down the bottom here, I can choose what level of permission they get. So I have everything from full control all the way through to design as which I had before. So what I'm going to do is simply leave that as approve, uncheck the send an email option and go share. So now we'll see an individual user has the been given rights to this document in this particular area. So this is never generally good practice um, because it becomes very hard to manage and maintain. So Basically, in summary, what we've covered is that um, when you go into your team site, generally by default there are three groups that are security groups that are created for you. These are called visitors, members and owners. Visitors have uh, read-only, members have read-write, and owners have full control. You can get to this either by using the share button, or if you want to go directly, you go to the cog, and then select site settings. Now remember these options are only available to you if you are an owner or an administrator of the site. 
once we're in site settings we can select for example uh, people and groups or site permissions so we can now go in and look at the permissions for this complete team site we can make any adjustments we can add new users we can create new groups and put users in the groups now once we've done that remember that by default the rights that we set for our team site will flow down through all the elements within our site by default so if we change the rights for our team site at the top level then for example our document library will also inherit those rights now to change that you go into the individual element you then select for example the library tab and what you will find then is the ability to change the library settings so if we select library so we're in the document library we then go to uh, library settings which will be over here on the right and one of the options here is basically to then configure the permissions for the document library so when you do go into the permissions you'll see that they look very similar it's just a matter of adding users and removing users and the other thing to keep in mind in the top left hand corner here is the item whether they're inheriting or not inheriting so again quick and easy to change within SharePoint so in summary you can provide and manage permissions in a SharePoint team site from the top level of the whole site all the way down to individual items within SharePoint if you so choose to. So again, thank you very much for watching this video.